Imagine these big challenges presenting in front of you. You came from a CPA background, want to transition into B2C space, and you're also immigrant. On top of that, you are also underpaid. What if I tell you, you are not alone. A lot of immigrants, lots of women are underpaid, but there's a way for you to jump into an even better company, change your industry, and really do the work you're truly passionate about. Today, I had a pleasure to invite our guest, Amy Yu, and she is a product manager at TikTok doing creator platforms and she's going to share with you regarding her challenges her journey and vulnerabilities and also how she conquered those challenges so that you can repeat her success as well hey guys this is dr nancy lee a director of product and feature in forbes i've helped 100 people land their dream pm job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, go to pmaccelerator.io. To learn the most effective way to become product manager, you should subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to so be notified every time I turn a new video every Tuesday. Hi, Amy. Welcome to our show. So excited to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, Nancy. Awesome. So actually, um, I invite you for a specific purpose because it actually made so many transitions and also conquered so many big challenges during a very competitive like recession and comic. Can you do a quick introduction of yourself to the audience? Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Amy. I'm a product manager at TikTok in the San Jose office, which is their US headquarter. Um, a little bit about my background. I transitioned into product management from a CPA background. Uh, prior to becoming a PM, I was a consultant at Deloitte Risk Advisory, got my CPA there, and I realized I wanted to work in tech as a PM. So I pivoted and I worked at the B2B SaaS Deloitte startup for two years. And then last year, around August, I quit my last job because I realized um, I was interested in the B2C space and in creator economy and the accounting tech space might, might not be in alignment with my longer term interests. And back then, I also realized um, I wanted to land a PM job in the US because especially in the Bay Area, because that is the tech capital of the world where some of the top talent in PM were, uh, are working at. I wanted to be able to learn from the best. And in the meantime, I was also aware that we're in a recession economy. The job market is like super, super competitive. I was switching industry, switching country as an immigrant, as a non-US resident and also potentially switching the size of company as well, moving from the startup space to the big tech space. So three barriers on my PM careers. Um, I was I was actually quite overwhelmed. I was quite stressed out because I knew the PM hiring process was like really, really lengthy and very competitive as well. I really didn't think I could do it <laughs> back in like August last year. It did take some time, but I did it. I made, I made a transition. I'm now working in one of my dream industries in, in creator economy space. And to my surprise, actually, my salary has increased a lot, which I didn't think was even possible even one year ago. And it was quite a journey of tra uh, career transition. I know a lot of women are actually very underpaid and a lot of us are actually not confident or comfortable in asking for more in our compensation or you know applying for that job that we're doubting ourselves whether we're qualified for i guess my intention of you know joining this discussion is to send out a message for the women out there to believe in yourself to have faith in yourself it doesn't matter where you are right now in your career it doesn't matter how big your dream is don't be afraid to go for what you want because it is possible it, it's not easy but it's definitely possible and i want to use my story to you know hopefully give some bit of inspiration or hopefully some perspective on how you can also bridge the gap and you know make the kind of jump or pivots that you want. Awesome. Uh, Amy, can you break it down regarding the challenges you're facing? And I love how vulnerable you are regarding you want to film this video to really stand out, to, to encourage, inspire lots of women out there, especially your salary increase significantly after you land a job at TikTok. So let's start from the top. What are the top three challenges and how did you conquer these challenges? Tell us your challenges first. So the top three challenges are, if I look back on when I was applying for uh, PM jobs back in, I would say October last year, I would say it was definitely extra 
competitive during the recession economy、uh, because there are massive layoffs everywhere. So that itself is very difficult. But for me, in particular, the three biggest challenge were one. Switching industry. I came from a CPA background, and I worked at an accounting tech company for two years. So most of the companies that were interested in hiring me were fintech companies and other accounting tech companies.、Mm-hmm. And it was very hard for me to land an interview in any industry outside accounting tech or in outside fintech in general. The second challenge was switching location. I was based in Toronto, and I was I wanted to land a PM role in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is probably one of the most competitive job market in the world in tech because everyone want to be in Bay Area, right? And the third challenge I would say is tackling the PM recruitment process. I'm sure a lot of people who are interested in becoming a PM is aware. Of how lengthy the PM hiring is, especially at later stage startups and bigger tech companies,、um, there might be potentially at least five rounds of interviews. For each round of the interview, there are many different kinds of PM questions that you need to prepare for. It takes a lot of effort and work, and I f- I felt like without a proper structure, it is very hard to、um, to stand out during the interview process. Not to mention, landing the interview itself is already competitive. So we all know the importance of building a part of a portfolio, and actually, I have a checklist of 13 different kind of projects people can build on the side to create their own part of portfolio to gain experience. Starting from today, I'm going to go go to this website right here. I'm also going to put it in the description of this video, and we also have many different videos regarding free part of portfolio tools you should definitely use. We're also going to put it right here in the description and comment of this video as well. So, Amy, I love. You started talking about the transition, and also very inspired by you in terms of the courage, saying no to your past profession. Getting a CPA is very challenging. It's、yeah. extremely challenging. <laughs> and and you just switch your career completely because it just doesn't align with the long term career goal. And I also understand. Actually, this is one of the biggest transition. CPA and like accounting, you know, like tax return. I think it's very challenging. <laughs> I <laughs> felt boring. Sorry, a challenge. Boring and challenging at the same time. And now you want to do like TikTok creators, you know, economy product. So how exactly did you conquer the challenge, make the transition? I would say one of the things that the key things that has helped me is using leverage. I will share two stories on how I use leverage in、um, accelerating my PM career. So first time was、uh, when I was pivoting into PM. When I decided when I I want to become a product manager back in 2020, I had no prior PM experience, right? And and I knew that to become a PM, you need PM experience and you need to demonstrate you can think like a PM. And I had a CPA background. So what kind of tech company will value someone like me? A tech company that serves CPA, a tech company that build products for CPA, because I understand their users. I was one of their users. I can really emphasize really well what's their user pain point. I have that in-depth insider knowledge of their、mm-hmm. users' pain points, and user empathy is one of the most important PM competencies. I use that as a leverage to build a case study of some of the accounting software users, and I presented that during the interview with、um, my last employer, and that landed my first PM job. So that was the first leverage that I used, which is my accounting background. Awesome. The second leverage that I used in terms of making the transition from accounting tech to creator economy is leveraging my creator identity. So something I didn't share earlier is I'm a stand-up comedian by night. That is my side hustle identity. I make funny videos on TikTok. I make funny videos on both Instagram and TikTok. So I am very obsessed with how to crack the TikTok algorithm, and I am very obsessed on understanding what helps creators succeed. Actually, when last year when I was doing a comedy festival in LA, one of the talent agency. Did a workshop and told all the comedians that they need to build a TikTok presence. They need to build. They need to have a TikTok account. They need to upload their videos on TikTok because that's how comedians get recognized. TikTok can literally build a comedian's career. So I used that as a leverage by doing a case study of content creators on TikTok because I I I did stand up comedy right. So I already knew a lot of creators who use TikTok and they had a lot of challenges with you know continuing. Using TikTok to you know build their brand to build their audience, 
So I interviewed at least, I would say 10 creators. Um, a lot of them are, are comedians to understand their pain points. And then I synth I use my PM thinking to synthesize the user pain points and prioritize them to identify the key problems to solve. And then I put together a presentation using PM framework to identify the best solution to solve, potential best solution to solve that problem. And then this I present, awesome. yeah. So that I would say um, one of the most helpful thing for me in my PM career transition is using leverage. And that leverage doesn't have to come from your job. That leverage can come from the skills that you build outside of your job. It could come from your passion. It could come from like your nerdy obsession. It could come from your network. Awesome. So how do you learn how to build a product portfolio the way you want it? Because lots of people say, oh, let me just make me my own product portfolio by myself doing some side project. But most people doing that, they are not landing a job from TikTok. They're paying them a lot of money. Yeah. What makes yours different? That is a very good question. Actually, I would say the most challenging part of building product portfolio is really prioritizing what to include in the product portfolio. Mm -hmm. Like knowing what's important to including a product portfolio because um, there's just so much to learn as a PM. There are so many skills. There are so many key core competencies. How do you showcase your skills within constraint? Like within, let's say like a short, short in a, in a very concise form to potential hiring manager because they have short attention span. They don't have time to, to learn the entire life story of your career, right? What I found really helpful was, um, so I joined um, Product Manager Accelerator by Dr. Nancy Lee, which is, you know, your program. <laughs> And um, one of the most useful module for me was one, the product portfolio module, because it, ha it kind of refreshed my knowledge as a PM on the, some of the PM foundational thinking and PM foundational skills. And two is like, how do you structure your response for the product sense question, which is the product case question. During Dr. Nancy Lee's uh, PM Accelerator program, one of the modules um, is about pro how to tackle product sense questions, uh, slash, uh, aka product case questions during PM interview. Dr. Nancy has taught us a framework, which is the modified version of the circle framework to tackle, you know, questions like how would you improve X product? And I did get asked that qu a question during my PM interview at TikTok, which is how would you improve our um, content platform for creators? Wow. Yeah, I did get asked that so question. So you nailed it. I got asked that question. But instead of using the modified circle framework to answer it on the spot, what I did was I showed them my whole case study because I used the framework to build a case study of creators pain points, since that's something, you know, I, I was very passionate about. So I used the modified circle framework to showcase my way of thinking on a slide deck. And I walked through, I walked the hiring manager through, you know, step by step. This is how I prioritize the problems to solve. This is how I prioritize the potential solutions. This is how I analyzed the competitor space. This is my recommendation. And also this is a go-to-market strategy. And I found very structured way of thinking yeah, that I learned from the PM Accelerator was really, really helpful in organizing my responses because I have a tendency to ramble a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, like outside of, I would say outside of an interview, I talk, I'm someone who talks a lot. And <laughs> I know. I'm someone who talks a lot and uh, yeah. without a structure, people can easily get lost on, mm -hmm. you know, follow, uh, following w with me or keeping up with me. So mm -hmm. I definitely need to learn how to communicate and how to like present my, way, my, my thoughts in a very structured and easy to follow way. So Amy, I love how you share all the insight, how you land a job at TikTok doing those pivots. Um, you also mentioned the second big challenge, which is as an immigrant, non-US citizen, uh, landing a job in the US is actually very, very challenging. And to be frank, lots of people also want to move to the US. They just feel like, oh no, they need visa sponsorship and no work experience in the US at all. They feel it's impossible. Um, like someone like you and many of our students have made it happen, even if they're all immigrants, never work in the U.S. Can you share with us how you challenge your own immigration challenges moving to the U.S.? That is a very good question, and it was definitely not easy at all. So my advice for those wanting to, you know, relocate to the U.S. Um, that require re visa sponsorship will be, first of all, I would say try to find out what kind of companies are open or able to sponsor a visa because from my experience um 
a lot of the startups、um, they kind of prefer not to hire people who require visa sponsorship, and that kind of helped me kind of re-strategize my job search approach. Not spending too much effort in applying for those companies. I think one of the ways to identify potential company that can sponsor a visa will be, like, one looking at other immigrant PM who got their visa. What kind of company did they work at? And、mm-hmm. ask for their experiences. And two, as a rule of thumb, I would say like usually the it will be mostly later stage of startup that will have the ability to have their own immigration team to help to support. The the visa application process, so that it could also be an indicator on in terms of the ease of landing a U.S. job. But in the same time, also I'm also aware that、um, by speaking to some of the PM friends, that some of the big tech company actually took back offers after knowing that the students need visa sponsorship.、Mm. So I would say this doesn't apply to all companies. I would still still recommend、uh, you doing the research. On whether there are any companies that have that kind of risk, right? Because you don't want to putting so much effort only to be told that just because you need a visa, you cannot have this job, right? That would be quite discouraging. Actually, that I learned that advice from Adam Lee, which is also a student from an alumni from、uh, the PM Accelerator program, and he has a very very helpful blog. On Medium, that talks about his process of、um, uh, applying for visa. The second thing I would say to increase your chance of landing a job in the U.S. will be、uh, going back to my point of using leverage. So when I was applying for TikTok, in addition to the leverage of understanding creators, the other leverage I used was my bilingual competency, because、um, I knew that TikTok has a lot of engineers based in Asia, and.、Yeah. Uh, The ability to speak Mandarin is actually a very big asset as a PM when、mm-hmm. you're working cross-functionally and cross time zone, especially with the Asia team in Singapore and in China. So、yeah. I would say try to identify jobs that require a niche skill where you happen to have, especially in a very competitive job market. Like everyone wants the best job possible. Mm-hmm. It is so hard to set yourself apart because there, like, you will be competing with with not just you know other people who want to become a PM, but also other PMs who want a better job, who already have PM experience in the U.S. and startup founders. There are startup founders who wanted to become a PM because they were like, oh, I want to go back to a structured way of living. They have already founded a million dollar startup before, and they want to become a PM. That's how competitive the job market is. So you have to be strategic on building your brand and on like setting yourself apart. Yeah, and I do like you talk about regarding the niche. So let's also define the niche for the audience. The niche doesn't mean that smaller company. For example, Amy、right. joined TikTok, which is really big company. The niche could be the type of skills you have, could be the、um, type of product you build in the past, or any、yeah. kind of transfer skills. There's a combination of three different skills you have, and you are the、right. only person, or maybe one of the few. Tens of people, not hundreds of people, have those combination of three different skills, and that could be you. So、yeah. thank you for sharing with us. This is very insightful. How exactly you pass those interviews? Now you know how to find the right company and use product portfolio. So how exactly pass those PM interviews? Because you you said it earlier, right? Millions of people, or thousands of people, they are all product manager, or including layoff product manager from Google, Meta, Amazon. It's very competitive. So, how did you exactly actually pass those interviews? So that is a very good question.、Um, for me, I I use two things. One is I I kind of do it differently from everyone else.、Mm, tell me more. Which is, I took the initiative to build a case study to present to the interviewer, which. I could imagine probably not everyone would do that because usually how you how you tackle like the product sense question, product execution question, product strategy question is you you draw a whiteboard and you start writing things on the spot, right?、Mm-hmm. And I took a step ahead, which was I built a case study because I already thought through. I saw I would think through what might be asked during an interview. I think through if I were working already as a PM, like how I would tackle this kind of. Problems using, you know, the the PM framework, so that when I was asked those question in during interview, I already had something ready to talk about, and better I could show to the Harry manager that I had the initiative and the passion to already interview customers and to understand their needs. I did my research. I was really dedicated and passionate about the space. 
and I did have a lot of insights and understanding of the of, of the problem space. So that's something I did differently from a lot of other people. The second one was definitely try to identify what was my weaknesses. For mm-hmm. Usually for PM interview question, there's behavioral question, there's product sense, there's product execution, product strategy, yeah, uh, and and a technical question, right? So, so I'm curious, what's your weakness? My weakness. One is being concise. First of all, for all uh, kind of interview question, being concise. Like, how yes. do I how do I prioritize uh, my responses in a way that is concise and can say more with less. Mm-hmm. You know, say more with less, right? And um, the second, I would say knowing how to structure my response to the product sense, product execution, product metrics, product strategy question. In a PM accelerator program, it helped me reduce that overwhelm and. It, it made it made it seem more manageable because um, the structure of the PM accelerator program is like there's weekly live cases training uh, where Dr. Nancy will ta- uh, teach the different modules um, mm-hmm. in a, in, in kind of like a ro- rotational manner. So yeah. you can choose to drop into the live training based on your weakness. And there's also weekly office hour where you can ask very targeted questions on where you're struggling with. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was in PN Accelerator program, I kind of prioritize and structure my study a little bit by prioritizing the areas that I was the weakest, which is like I made sure I study all the PM interview modules on questions that I knew I didn't have a lot of confidence on just mm-hmm. to, learn, you know, to learn the way of thinking. And then I drop into I will participate in a live case training to um, to learn how to, for example, do customer segmentation. And also like to catch if there's any gap in my way of thinking and also for any area that I felt a little bit unco- more uncomfortable with, like I, I I could observe how other people do it and mm-hmm. and also observe how Nancy, Dr. Nancy Lee got uh, give feedback to the students on how they can potentially re- improve their response, which I all found really, really helpful. And then during the office hour, if I had if I had any areas of weaknesses that I felt really uncomfortable with or I felt like not confident in in myself, um, I could always ask for help, um, mm-hmm. Dr. Nancy and the, the mentors, which I found really, really helpful. I love that you share so much regarding how exactly you prepare for interviews. So now let me ask you an uh, overall question. So what's the most important shift? that pushes the next level. So during the PM Accelerator program, Nancy, uh, Dr. Nancy taught us a mindset called burn the bridge, which, which in Chinese saying is like which is like, you just cut off my backup. Like I cut off my backup by quitting, like just, just not turning back, like just not going back and just t- took that leap of faith. I was hesitating a little bit on whether or not I would join PM Accelerator because, you know, I was already living on my saving and I need to be careful with where I spend my money, right? And it was not a cheap program, right? (laughs) And what I found so helpful was the PM Accelerator program was really prioritization. It's so important because sometimes like people tend to procrastinate and get paralyzed when they have too many options, when they have too much information and too when there's when there's too much out there and they they don't know how to differentiate the signal versus the noise um, mm-hmm. what i found so helpful was joining uh the pm accelerator program was it helped me filter out the noise like it helped me just like filter out what is not important and i just do not even waste my time do not even waste any effort on things that would not yield result and instead channel my energy and my time towards things that are actually more effective it was a really helpful cohort and community of um, people, like-minded people who um, a lot of them are in similar career phase as me and going through similar process. And some of them have been have been a little bit ahead uh, that could share such valuable insights. Normally, if I wanted to get mentorship or peer mentorship or peer support, I had to seek those out on my own. For example, I need to reach out to people individually in say, women in product, I had to network. I could still make connection, but then it's a very hit or miss and it would mm-hmm. definitely take longer time. So I would say like a lot of people who are on the fence about like whether or not they want to join a bootcamp or a, 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 pro, a structure program like PM Accelerator. Mm-hmm. My advice is like, I see paying for a PM Accelerator program as an investment in my career, not an expense. 
after joining this program, I was able to land a job offer that was a significant salary raise that in an industry that's in aligned with my long-term passion and also um, be able to hugely, I would say I hugely accelerate my career in at a pace that I, I couldn't imagine even a year ago. In that sense, I feel like I am investing in career capital rather than just an expense because there, it, it, I'm building my asset, I'm building uh, my career capital that can yield benefit, uh, you know, that will yield income, that will yield so much value in the future. Let's say you you, you decide to pay for a course um, to train up a PM skill, like you want to evaluate a potential return on investment based on like the long term benefit, right? Because I, I wanted to join a program where not only tackle interview questions, but also like, you know, strategize how I look for a job that's the best fit for me and um, and also learn foundational PM skill, like even improve my PM skill that will benefit me in my future job, right? You you want to make sure that you are you build your core competency. And I feel like if you learn on your own, you can still do it, but you will be probably walking as opposed to sprinting or running. If you have a lot of time, let's say you have several, you, you give yourself two years or several years, you can definitely do it at your own pace. But if you say you're, you're aiming for, uh, you're aiming for, let's say efficiency, you're aiming for, you're, you're trying to shorten the amount of time on this transition, then I would recommend investing in, you know, like a more structured program where you can get structured mentorship and, you know, a faster feedback loop from your peers as well. So that way you grow faster. So Amy, so tell us what advice you have for, fun, for someone who wants to start the PM career? So uh, my advice for someone who wants to start their PM career will be one is build foundational PM knowledge and PM way of thinking because um, product manager needs to think in a different way than consultants and marketers. You're working in cross-functional teams with both business and technical stakeholders and your customers. You'll be working with a lot of different persona. You, you will need to learn how to prioritize what to build, when to build, why is it important to build. Um, you need to make a be able to make a lot of decisions based on limited resource, limited data. And I would say a, it's very important for a product manager to learn um, for example, design thinking to learn the PM foundational skills on how you can uh, identify the right problem and prioritize the right problem to solve. And also work with your cross-functional stakeholders to identify the best solution to solve that problem awesome. that align with your company's objective. In terms of building the PM skill set and knowledge, um, mm -hmm. there, are, there are several ways. I would say like one of the most efficient way is joining a program like PM Accelerator, uh, joining a bootcamp because it's like very systematic training on, the, you know, the PM foundational knowledge, right? The second advice I will give is try to build hands-on experience if you didn't come from a PM background, because for most of the PM job, they look for relevant PM experiences. And if you didn't come from a PM background, it's really important to build a product portfolio where you can demonstrate to hiring manager that even though you didn't work as a PM before, you have actually had hands-on experience as a PM, either mm -hmm. through uh, working on side projects or volunteering for nonprofits or you know be participating in a hackathon where you got to ship an MVP. You want to make sure that you you are not just uh, you, do, you 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 don't just have the theories that you learn from say books or courses. You also mm -hmm. you also have applied them in real life, be, and and you have learned something from those hands-on experiences as well. So those will be uh, my two pieces of advice. This is amazing, and thank you so much for sharing with us, Amy. Actually, you share so much details. I think people can just can follow your same path to transition and also land a high paying job in big tech companies in the US as well. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And of course, I will also check out your uh, comedian Santa comedian jokes for sure. And yes. <laughs> we're also going to put it in the description of this video as well. And we're also going to boost your following through our YouTube channel. Awesome. If you like any free takes we provide today, feel free to uh, like this video. And for regarding product portfolio, people ask these questions, where do we use it? What tools we use? Feel free to go to the link in the description and this website. You can download the 30 different project you can build and identify those uh, top five free tools and you can immediately get started and it's time to take massive action towards your career dream as well. 
Thank you very much for joining us today. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.